Welcome back to the Andrew Tate Show by GSMC Sports. Before the break in segment one, we were talking about the game between game two between the Boston Celtics and the Indiana Pacers. And now we are moving on, as I mentioned, to Major League Baseball, talking about a couple of different things, but starting with robot umpires, which sounds I don't know, more exciting. I don't know. It's not what I picture, uh, <laughs> but I'm picturing sci-fi. So let's go ahead and so she we go. still having those technical difficulties, aren't Thank they? You. <laughs> Thank you for uh, letting me know that I still was on the last segment. I appreciate that. Okay, no problem. Um, I, I need a robot umpire or a robot assistant, uh, something. So Okay, so your now, now you're doing good. Major League Baseball has announced that the implement that the implementation of robot home plate umpires is unlikely hap, unlikely to happen in 2025 due to ongoing technical issues. Commissioner Rob Manfred disclosed this development during a news conference following an owners meeting. Despite efforts to test the automated ball strike system ABS in minor leagues since 2019, the expected progress has not been achieved. In Class AAA parks, the system has been used this year with robots officiating the first three games of each series and humans with a challenge system taking over for the last three games. The preference among players, as gathered from MLB's meetings with them, leans towards a challenge-based ABS system. Mm -hmm. This system would allow catchers to maintain their framing skills, which are considered a vital part of the game. Initially, there was a belief that absolute accuracy in calling balls and strikes would be wildly supported. However, feedback from players highlighted potential negative impacts on the game, such as changes in the type of athletes recruited from the ca for the catcher position, emphasizing offense over defensive skills. MLB has slowed its pace of innovation after the successful introduction of the pitch clock in 2023, opting for a more deliberate approach to ensure accuracy and through consider a thorough consideration of any new rule changes. Discussions with the Players Association on the specifics of an automated strike zone have not yet commenced, as there is no consensus on its exact implementation. All right, Tate, thoughts on robot umpires and uh, moving forward. Okay, this is one of those things. I know if you are a diehard baseball fan, you, you're probably against this. But I feel like this is an example of when you look around and you see the situation where the game is not progressing. Uh, it's it's too slow to progress, and I feel like it loses a lot of its younger fans. When you look at the Major League Baseball and their their fans, they're much. It's a much older uh, group than than other sports, and I think a big part of that is the the slowness to adapting to technology. One of the things that I have always hated about baseball, and I'm a baseball fan, I'm, I've always supported the Yankees, is this whole umpire's human approach where they can't adjust to technology. You have one pitcher, because he's a big name guy, he gets a much larger strike zone. Uh, it's adjusted. Guys get bigger names, guys that's been in the league a little bit longer, they get more of a benefit of the doubt, but a young guy or a no-name guy doesn't get the same cachet that goes with it. Uh, umpires having way too much influence on the outcome of the game. I have always been in favor of the robot, robot umpires where you have a true strike zone. Uh, and it shouldn't be, oh, he's he's catching he's catching the corner. But when you really look at it, it's actually a ball. But because he's this big name guy with a big name contract, they're they're willing to give more of the benefit of the doubt. And that's been that's been kind of an issue. I think if they made the adjustments, yes, I think there would be a different caliber of catcher, maybe. Uh, but I think a lot of other players who have been in this game would have a lot more opportunities because it's a much it becomes a more fair game where you don't have to guess 
okay, where is the strike zone? It comes down to, if you have an electronic strike zone, in my opinion, then it comes down to who's better. Not who has an, who's getting an extra advantage. It's here. This is what the strike zone is. The pitcher must throw within that strike zone and the hitter. It's now the pitcher skill against the hitters skill without an umpire giving the benefit of the doubt or lack of benefit of doubt and making the strike zone a little bit bigger for this guy because he's a bigger name. I've always been against it. I've always hoped that they would go with an electronic strike zone. I know my my take on this one isn't as popular as a lot of hardcore baseball fans, but this is my show, and I'm going to give you my opinion. <laughs> as you are entitled to. Um, do you do you do you think that slowing down? Do you think they're just slowing down, or do you think that this is slowing down in advance of just not moving forward with it? I from from it, it's a I think it's a screeching halt. Um, players are not going to players don't adjust to change well. Owners don't adjust to change well. Yes, this recently adding the pitch clock in which was a huge success uh people just the baseball baseball teams do not and organizations do not adjust to change this is the way it's always been done this was whack when babe ruth did it this is where this is the way ty Cobbs did it but yeah they also smoked cigarettes drank before games and was hugely out of shape as well Things change with time. We're in, we're in a different world where, where athletes are bigger, stronger, faster, and technology needs to keep up with it. I would love to see it. I, I, I hope I'm wrong, but when you see, even talking about when they, when they talk to the players and ask the players their opinion, players voted for, you know, they like the old system better than embracing technology the technology makes the game a much better game a truer game where i'm more intrigued by who really uh, who's really uh the battle between the pitcher is is he really the best pitcher in the world or i don't like thinking hey this pitcher he's get you know he's gonna get he's getting a larger strike zone than other people so he's getting more strikeouts than 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 a lot of other younger players or players that are not as known. Uh, I've never liked that about baseball. I like the fact that you know what the strike zone is. Every it's absolutely fair, and it makes for a more intriguing game, in my opinion. All right. Well, you mentioned the Yankees and our next half of this segment is the Yankees. So let me go ahead and get that slideshow up. All right. New York Yankees um, are facing financial concerns, according to their owner, Hal Steinbrenner. Despite their success, Steinbrenner stated to the New York Post that the team's record high payroll is unsustainable, citing the financial burden of the luxury tax. The Yankees opened the season with a $296.6 million payroll, the third largest in MLB history, trailing only the New York Mets and Los Angeles Dodgers. Steinbrenner emphasized the need for financial prudence, expressing his disbelief in the necessity of a $300 million payroll to win a championship. This statement comes at a crucial time as the Yankees navigate potential contract negotiations, particularly with star player Juan Soto, whose impending free agency looms large. Soto's performance this season positions him for a lucrative contract, potentially one of the largest in MLB history. While Steinbrenner acknowledged the financial challenges, he also provided optimism for the future, noting the considerable amount of money expected to come off the books next, se next offseason. This financial flexibility could provide the Yankees with opportunities to address roster needs while navigating potential departures in free agency. So how do you feel about Steinbrenner's <laughs> statements? How are you feeling about going forward with the Yankees and this? Just how are you feeling in general about all this? Okay, now this one, 
is this one's kind of funny. I'm a Yankees fan, so make sure this is clear. But I'm an I'm an old school Yankee fan, and baseball has gotten to the point where the Yankees are claiming poor, <laughs> the, the the richest baseball organization in all of sports, the the organization that invented blowing up the salary. I mean, huge salaries, whether it was in the 60s, it was in the 70s, it was in the 80s, uh, 90s, you know, uh, that's, you know, that's what the Yankees were known for, bringing in the big name star, having them uh, on the Yankees. That, that's what, that was George Steinbrenner's way. Uh, Man, I I feel like George Steinbrenner's turning over his grave right now, thinking about like you know hearing hearing a Yankee or and a Steinbrenner saying, we get we we have to use uh, financial prudence. Uh, you know we gotta we gotta worry about the salary and how much we're gonna spend. This is a great example of it's a new world, and but they're not wrong, partially because of what the Yankees did. In the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, which which made salaries go through to astronomical levels, it is now to the point where even the Yankees are having issues. Players in baseball are the the salaries are have ballooned to such high levels, and I don't know if it's good for the game. When you when you look around and you you look at a player making six hundred seven hundred million dollars, uh, you baseball. It's one of those things where how much money before how much does these salaries keep going up before you start hearing about and it's already inklings out there that teams are starting to lose money, or there are there are teams in baseball before the first pitch of the season is thrown, you already know this season's over, next season's over, and the seasons after that is over. You're not competing, you're, you're going to do every, you know, the team doesn't have the money to compete on the levels of a Dodgers or a Mets or a Yankees. And so, Teams have to be more lucky or more crafty with who the, as their farm systems. If they're a poor franchise to make it uh, because of these, because of the salary income uh, issues. But it's funny hearing a Steinbrenner, a Steinbrenner complain and say that they have to be, you, you don't need a $300 million salary, uh, you know, roster to win a World Series that you can do it on a little bit of, let's say, cheaper or a little bit of, a little bit of a discount. Daddy Warbucks is now asking, looking for a cheaper way of doing things. Never thought I would see that. Never thought I would hear that. And I think it's absolutely hilarious. You, you 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 answered my follow up question. Before. <laughs> I, asked you, I was going to ask you about that th that, that assessment about the not needing three hundred million uh, yes. to win a World Series. So again, going forward, we'll see what happens. Are they are are they as poor as <laughs> you shouldn't say Yankees and poor in the same? Yeah, sense, that's right? that's kind of like Elon Musk saying, "Man, I don't know if I need that that uh, that twenty million dollar uh, yacht. Maybe I can get away with a fifteen million dollar yacht." That's kind of the way I felt like that that statement was. Oh, okay. so. it's probably not <laughs> so. We're gonna go ahead and take our next break. When we come back, we'll be moving. Uh, we've done basketball. We've talked about baseball. We'll be moving on to football and that possible 18 game season. Stay tuned. You are watching the Gia, the Andrew Tate show by GSMC Sports, and we will be right back. 